Uh, well, welcome everybody to the latest edition of Ed Talks, um, our podcast. And it couldn't be more apposite, really, that I'm talking to Vanessa Warwick, um, founder of Property Tribes and well-known commentator on the property rental sector. Um, really, seriously, guys, if you want any information on what's going on in the world of, of PRS, go to propertytribes.com. It's just got everything that uh, you might need to know on there. Uh, but more importantly, Vanessa has um, a big social media profile and is a well-known face. In fact, I think it's after we finished off, finish this off, she's being brave enough to go up to the um, Conservative Party conference to talk about being a landlord. So I, I don't really know where to start, Vanessa. So why don't you? I don't know, Ed. It's incredible times. Um, it's it's an, a brilliant time, as you said, to have a catch up because... Well, if we wanted to talk about what has happened between now and our last catch up, which was, I don't know, over a year ago, I guess. Um, well, actually, no, let's talk about what's happened in the last two weeks. There's enough there to fill an entire yep. webinar. Let's do um, that. It, that's what I think listeners really want to hear. It's absolutely extraordinary times. Um, I've been a landlord since 1992 and I've been a portfolio landlord since 2004. And I'm very, very well known for, um, you know, keeping the faith with buy to let through, you know, whatever headwinds landlords experience. And boy, have we experienced some over, I would say, the last five or six years, including onerous taxation, increasing legislation and regulation, um, you know, Brexit, uh, we've got the Section 24 tax, as I mentioned, we've got um, the, had the COVID-19 pandemic and more recently and ongoing the Ukraine-Russian war. Um, so all of those things have really created challenges for landlords, but, you know, I've kept the faith. Um, but for the first time, I'm starting to feel that buy-to-let is uh, becoming unviable um, what's happened in the last couple of weeks has really sent shockwaves throughout the landlord community. It feels like a buy to let roller coaster, and I'm seriously thinking about jumping off. So, what is it about the last two weeks? If I was going to try and characterize what's created the difficulty here, they've sort of, as of this morning, the, um, the new regime seems to have withdrawn the, the tax rise, but the biggest issue had been this. 45 to 40 percent tax reduction, which the prop the, the markets had taken in bad faith, um, with the result that the pound had fallen. The only way that the Bank of England was going to, re to, to react to that was to put up interest rates or threaten to put up interest rates. The net result was that loads of lenders took thousands of products off the market and have now put them back on again at much higher rates. And the government have now reversed that tax cut. So it may not have been that necessary anyway. So if you put that chaos to one side for a moment, is it those um, interest rate rises or mortgage rate rises or funding rises for buy to let landlords that have made the, has that been the final nail for you? It's it's one of them. Um, you know, I think obviously the, there's the energy crisis, which is causing great consternation to landlords and indeed, of course, tenants. But I think for me, you know, it, it, the mini budget was a chance to to do something really different uh, and really commit to to something. And, and that that's what I was hoping for. Um, and unfortunately, it was uh, just a complete unmitigated disaster. So now we've got, you know, mistrust has found this magic money tree, uh, which Theresa May could never find, um, you know, to prop up households during the energy crisis. So m more government spending of, you know, unprecedented proportions. It's even more than what was spent on furlough during COVID. And then you're combining that, uh, you know, with massive inflation, which is only going to go up because of government spending and uh, tax cuts, which means that the public purse might might diminish. Um, there was a, a moment in time to do something to make it feel like a conservative government again and to stop the rot in the private rented sector. One of the things that I would have liked to see is um, the standard rate uh, tax threshold being raised. 
Um, so that would take more landlords who are in uh, um, investing in a, a personal name. It would take them out of the Section 24 tax regime, and that could in turn help increase supply in the sector because we are seeing unprecedented demand, but diminishing supply. And, you know, rents are going up. Um, people can't get on the housing ladder because of these interest rate rises. Um, it, it, you know, it's like a perfect storm. And I, I, I've said this before, I, I thought we've had a, a perfect storm before, but this one, it, I, I'm calling it hurricane trust. Um, it's, it's just an unmitigated disaster on so, so many levels. Well, the, uh, there's a lot of hyperbole there. I mean, you know, it, unprecedented, etc. And, and I'm not, I'm not disagreeing that there is an awful lot at play here at the moment. And you and I have spoken in the past, both off screen and on screen, about the dangers of reducing the private rental sector too much and of being seen to try and be on the side of first time buyers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. And I think that has all been proved to have been, not, well, if not a mistake, then certainly ill advised. Um, I mean, the problem surely at the moment is trying to get more people back into the sector. And I don't necessarily subscribe to the to the to the idea that things are just going to get worse and worse and worse. We've both been around long enough, pardon my French, to, to have seen things go up and down. We know that that you 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 get these awful moments in in particularly in financial history where you get a sort of black, this is not even a black swan event, it's sort of us stabbing ourselves or shooting ourselves in the foot, it seems to me. But anyway, don't forget, as, as a backdrop, you have got lots of places in the world have inflation, lots of places um, have, have falling value against the dollar because the dollar is strong, lots of places have energy crisis, lots of places have interest rates going up. It's not only an endemic here in the UK, and I think the backdrop to a lot of that may well change. Who knows what's going to happen with Putin? Who knows what's going to happen with the Ukraine war? An awful lot of this does stem, the, and certainly the inflation stuff post-COVID-19 comes from problems with, with, with that. So I don't necessarily subscribe to the fact that this is going to go on and on and on and on. I do think it's going to sort of, we may have six months or so, and I'm fascinated with your, well, I'm, I'm not fascinated, but I agree with your this, this thing about there being ridiculous amounts of money pumped into the energy issues. I mean, it's just to support the, UK households for, for six months, it's going to cost about as much as it costs to run the NHS for a year. It's absolutely enormous sums of money, 120 billion pounds, you know, just huge amounts of money. But if one assumes for a second that that is sort of going to uh, not go away, but inflation is going to drop out, prices don't continue to go up. If we look at the fact that interest rates, because of what the government have done today and back down on the 45 pence thing, the pound, the, 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 the dollar's already back or the dollar's dropped a little bit against sterling, it's back up to 112, 115. Seems like it's going a little bit back in our direction. If all that happens, do you think it's gone too far for people like you? Are you now, even if that all changed and went back to something approaching where we were two or three weeks ago, have you had enough of that? Is that something which you're just going to back away from, being a landlord? Well, no, because property is a long term investment and it doesn't benefit from short term thinking or knee jerk reactions. And, and this is the value of discussions like this, the discussions that we've been having on property tribes. There are scores of them. Um, and, you know, if you do get into a very emotionally charged state like like I was when all of this this kicked off, um, you know, you go and you read other people's opinions and then you're able to apply your own critical thinking to them and they help you formulate a, a way forwards. Um, so so that's what I'm doing. It's an ongoing process. Um, I'm not going to make any you know, knee jerk reactions. I've got two uh, remortgages going through um, to get off SVRs, which are financially crippling. They should go through in the next two or what three What do you weeks. think? Let's just talk about that for a second. What do you think those are going to change from to if you just talk about the interest rates? Uh, well, who knows? Um, you know, some people are saying going up to 6%. I, I, I really don't know. But I do know that the writing was on the wall that rates were going to go up because they've been historically low uh, and people should have been prepared for well, this. Well, that's an incredibly good point, Vanessa, you made, that, of course, people have got used to these ridiculously low interest rates, mm. which are not normal. So we have got a generation of people who think that half percent interest rates are normal and 2% five-year fixes are normal. And I read on Property Tribes this morning, you put a piece up there about 
rates going to 6%, and that's a lot less than, well, not a lot less, but it is less, it's more, pardon me, than the yields you get on most properties. Let's just talk about that for a second. So if you look at your portfolio, for instance, at the moment, where where would you say y- your yields are and where should buy-to-let landlords expect to be able to get a yield at the moment? What sort of yield would they expect to get? Well, it's such a tricky question, Ed, because as you know, um, the UK is just a series of micro markets and everybody has a different circumstance um, and personal situation and uh, how what they want to achieve from buy to let. And that's one of the things that I love about it. You can tailor it to whatever it is you're trying to achieve. So if you've got very significant other income, you're not really going to be bothered if you're in it for the very long term for capital growth, if your properties are just breaking even. Um, Right now, traditional buy to let is challenging, um, London more so. Um, you know, you, you should really be looking at about a minimum 5% yield. Um, but as you know, I have a couple of holiday lets. Um, they don't have to adhere to all the rules and regulations of buy to let. They're not affected by Section 24 tax regime. Um, and they've done extremely well this year. And I've already got bookings um, coming in for the rest of the year. So, um, you know, if I was going to start investing now or if I was going to bu- go back into buying mode now, I would I would probably buy another coastal holiday let because, you know, you say uh, we've had, uh, you know, a whole generation of people that are used to these very low interest rates. Well, you're right. We've had a whole generation of landlords that have only been investing with these parameters. And, you know, if some of them have remained on SVRs, that they are going to get a very, very nasty shock. And a lot of landlords who are very highly leveraged um, or, or, you know, poor yields, poor quality properties, I fear they are going to get wiped out by this. We've already got people on Property Tribe saying that that it's the end of the road for them and they're looking to sell up really quickly or take a hit or whatever. So it, it does depend on your, your personal position. My view is I take a lesson from sailing because my husband and I, big sailors, and when uh, you go into a storm in a sailing boat, one of the best things you can do is perform a maneuver called heave to and that is where you set the sails so that your boat just rests on the water it's not moving forwards or backwards it's just static on the water and you can ride out any storm pretty much as a heave to and if you remember back to the fast net race um, in the 70s most of the boats that heave to survived the storm. Those that tried to run to the ports um, were, were destroyed by the storm. So I shall be heaving to with my portfolio. I shall be reading uh, property commentary. I shall be st- steering well clear of the mainstream media. Um, I think, you know, they talk down and create such clickbait headlines, uh, you know, that they will influence people that don't apply critical thinking. So I shall, I will continue on. I'm I'm not going anywhere yet. I shall, I shall heave to and uh, keep my powder dry and see what happens over the next few Well, I think it's very good advice that about not, not reading, reading too much into, not reading the mainstream media and believing everything they say, because things change day to day. And for those who may not be hugely experienced by landlords, I mean, when Vanessa was talking about 5%, we're talking about gross yields there. And mm-hmm. of course, the thing about holiday lets is that you do get a much higher yield, but they, they're much more intensive to manage. You tend to get people coming and going every week. So there are sheets to change, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, but you but can I, have that all done, um, abs- you know, by a firm, which I have, I, have, I have fully managed. And I think one of the great things about holiday lets is that it's guests, it's not tenants. So you don't have a lot of the hassles um, that can arise if you have a delinquent tenant because a guest has no right of tenure at all. And I suppose that coastal or the acquisition of coastal properties is now being threatened by the fact that an awful lot of coastal owning or coastal councils are trying to keep landlords and and outside second homeowners away from their properties and and trying to keep them within the price range of locals who want to live and work in their local communities, which has always struck me as being a very difficult thing to to manage. Yeah, well, it's understandable in Cornwall, um, which is where that, that kind of is happening. Um, I don't have holiday lets in, in Cornwall. Mine are on the south coast. Um, and 
actually holiday lets provide vital input to to the local community they bring people into the area to spend money in restaurants and bars and at attractions and things like that um, they provide jobs for for cleaners and maintenance men and and so on so you know that they're not they're not all bad but you, like any property investment you do have to research uh, you know, where you're going to invest. And interestingly, um, one of these properties that I am remortgaging um, is, is a coastal holiday lot. And I wanted to get it valued at 275k for, for more remortgaging purposes. Um, and the value has come back at 325k. So I've had a 50,000 up valuation, which is very, very surprising indeed in these current times, because there is talk of um, buyers, you know, repricing now, um, suddenly saying, actually, I'm going to reduce my offer. Um, there's talk of valuers down valuing now because of the, the fears about the economy and the way the market's going to go. So um, you, you can find, uh, you know, a, a, a bright uh, a bright space in every in every downturn, but you've just got to keep your eyes open. But I keep... guess the up value there is because is precisely because it is a holiday let and it, it 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 has a good market. I wonder whether that would be the same if it was it, if if it wasn't such a. I mean, as you say, the general trend moment isn't for isn't for up valuing, but I guess <laughs> where you've got properties that would make a good investment for people. Um, I mean, the holiday let scene. I agree is a great. Um, it's a, it's a great uh, way to both um, invest without the concerns or the sometimes I think somewhat onerous legislation that goes with the with the rest of the PRS. Um, and, you know, holiday lets have always escaped that. But th th coming back to one thing you just said there about about remortgaging and refurbishing, I mean, certainly when I was one of the team running Douglas and Gordon, we had thousands of, of properties under management. And, and we always used to advise people that the main reason for owning a let, and admittedly we were in London where yields were always a bit less, is to pay for the maintenance of the property, really. So in other words, you get your income, but you don't keep it and go and spend it. You tend to keep upgrading the property. And particularly these days when you can't get the allowances against wear and tear and all this sort of stuff, you're gonna to have to be spending money on the property constantly to keep it in good condition. Would you say that's still valid that people need to be, I mean, you mentioned long-term. Um, for, for most people, they need to go into it with their eyes open, don't they? Well, 100 percent, you need to maintain your asset. If you let your asset decrease, then you're less likely to attract a tenant or you may attract a tenant at a lower rent. I mean, it's absolutely vital to uh, keep your properties up to standard um, and to do regular facelifts. I, I have a whole rolling program for mine where um, they get like a minor face, facelift every five years and then a major um, facelift every sort of eight or nine years um, it's just you know it's just so important and things like boilers you know you you need to check them uh, we've got the EPC issue looming on the horizon if you are going to upgrade your boiler now would be the time to upgrade it to an A plus rated boiler to future proof your property. Just explain the EPC thing because it's the first time really the EPCs have started to impinge on the potential value of properties so just explain quickly what that is well it, it really has and it's a very trending topic on property tribes but basically it's not set in statute yet but there are moves afoot by the government um, that come 2025 it is now but it keeps being pushed back um, if you have a, a property with an EPC, EPC rating of C or less you will not be able to let it so the portals will start um to reject properties if they're not a C and above rating uh, when the time comes. And this has you know, put a lot of landlords into a spin, particularly with old um, Victorian stock that is typically quite difficult to upgrade the typically energy. Typically E, isn't it? I mean, that's, you mm. know, so they've got a lot of work to do to get to a B. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, they have. So, you know, there's lots of talk about this on the forums, land landlords regarding it as a, a very uh, serious threat. Um, you know, I think they're saying the average upgrade is between 10 and 13,000 uh, pounds. So a lot of landlords have been remortgaging anyway to get access to cash to do these upgrades. Yeah. Um, but again, it's in the future. It's not set in stone. It, it's very hard for people to, and landlords who are running a business, let's face it, to plan if they, they don't really know what's going on. And now, you know, we've had this rental reform white paper um, just before a, a few weeks before the mini budget, uh, which set out all of these new 
uh, rules and regulations that the government wants to bring in. And now, of course, that's kind of been sidelined by all this um, turmoil. Um, the architect of it, Eddie Hughes, that resigned from his housing minister position. We don't know if a new housing minister is going to take up the cause. Again, landlords just it left in limbo, which kind of leads me back to, you know, my my analogy of, of heaving to in sailing. You can't make any plans if you can't tell which way the wind is blowing. No, well, I think that's very good advice. I think the heave to um, analogy is a very good one that people just need to sort of tread water for a little bit. I mean, some people yeah. can't because they haven't to read. They're having to remortgage or their deals are coming to an end. And the deals, I mean, I suspect that. I, I, I do get the impression that this storm will pass a little bit. I mean, I sit on the industry forum for the TPA, so we get a lot of, um, we've had a lot of input into the into the um, white paper and um, or, or the reform white paper, and or we've certainly listened to some of it. And it's sad that a lot of that, which could have been could have been some of it, could have been quite useful. It's a shame that that's being sidelined for the time being and pushed back even further. Look, at the end of the day, I think there's, you, you've given a huge amount of really salient information in, in, in what you've said. And I think a lot of people will will listen. And I really hope they listen to it. Um, I'm well aware that an awful lot of people listen to what we're doing because they, they they tell me tend to listen to this on their commute, on their earphones. So they probably they're, they're probably going to be arriving home shortly. So what I'd love to finish on is and you don't have some if you don't want to, because you don't. And actually, to be fair, this won't come out until probably after your speech at the Conservative or your your section at the Conservative Party Commons. But what are you going to tell them, Vanessa? Well, my session is a panel debate um, on how to make the private rented sector better for both tenants and landlords. And uh, also on the panel are representatives from Generation Rent and Shelter. And I think there's an MP on there and there's um, somebody from um, the local government association as well. And, and also my friend and colleague, Ben Beadle, who is um, CEO of the NRLA. Basically, what I hope to get across is to stop all this anti-landlord rhetoric um, in, in, in the media and all this landlord bashing that is just relentless, uh, you know, Landlords, the vast majority of them are decent people trying to provide good standards of accommodation. It's only the rogues, and I say rogues, maybe criminal is a better word for the type of landlords I refer to. It's also it's those landlords and also rogue tenants that spoil it for the majority. There's a lot of um, laws to enforce uh, landlord regulation in place but they are not utilised by the local authorities. So it's no good piling on more and more legislation and regulation when what is already there is not being enforced. All that's going to happen is that the good landlords are going to get uh, tired because their costs are, are, are much, much more adhering to all of this compliance and they're going to leave. Meanwhile, the, the, the rogue landlords just fly under the radar, carry on regardless, putting 13 people in a two bedroomed house, don't think anything of it. So I, I'm, I'm really going to fight um, to stop anti-landlord rhetoric, understand the demographic, demographic of the typical landlord in the UK. Um, and I really want to stop this, this them and us. We're all in the private rented sector together, Good landlords and good tenants working together, they're going to have a really positive experience of the sector. Uh, and that's really what I want to promote. And I do believe, Ed, that it is the informed and educated landlord um, who is going to survive all the challenges that we've been talking about on this call. Um, and I would certainly say to any of your listeners who are um, letting agents to maybe put on some landlord education events um, and get landlords um, talking, even if you do it online, uh, and start helping landlords see their way way through all of this. Very good way to uh, retain clients um, and to provide a community service, which is going to help ultimately everybody, because well-informed landlords um, mean that their tenants have a better experience of, of private renting, in my opinion. Yeah, and we, we forget that the vast majority do have a good experience. It's just the bad ones that get the headlines again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we all read the newspapers and read our websites and whatever else it is. Um, 
but it's 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 a shame that no one ever turns around and says yes you've done a really good job all you ever hear about is the people that get it wrong so good luck with well, that I, I really... say, thank you on. ed i'll just quickly tell you i had the times call me and the journalist said this was about five weeks ago the journalist said oh yes i'd, I'd like to get some comments from from you about landlords really putting up rates um and really you know pushing rents up and i said sorry with respect it's not landlords pushing rents up it is the market the market dictates what a rent what the rent will be for any property in any given area if you try and over inflate the rent it's unlikely that you'll get many applicants if you set the rent at the correct level you will get a good selection of applicants but landlords do not determine rents it is the market that determines rent. And because there's such a limited supply of rental properties at the moment, you've got more and more tenants going for each property that becomes available. And I can tell you that I've got a one bed flat in N5 in North London that came up for rent recently. And I had 107 applications in 48 hours and 17 viewings. Now, I just put that rent on at the same rent that the outgoing tenant um, had and I had four offers over that asking rent because they were so keen to get the property so you know it is the market that determines rent not landlords. Well that's a very good example um, and again one can't um, uh, one needs to understand that the press are, are looking for headlines and looking for for, for people to come and uh, click on their links and it, so, so there is an element of that but there's I really hope, thank you. I mean, I really hope that people will listen to this. We're certainly going to give it a very good push. Um, I really hope the Tory party is listening and that your panel gets the airtime it deserves. I think Ben's a really, really good advocate for the for the smaller landlord um, and, you know, Property Tribes, the National um, Residential Landlords Association, uh, well worth a visit as well. Um, and I really hope people will listen to this. And you know, if I get any feedback from this and questions, I'll put them through to you. Um, and I know you do an awful lot. There's a lot of other stuff you've got going on at the moment. I know it's not just it's, it's not just this. We all, we all have our lives, but this is a particular bit of our lives which is very affected by what's going on at the moment. So thank you so much for taking the time out to talk. Um, and I look forward to promoting this and, um, and and hearing what people think. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me, Ed. It's always a pleasure um, to speak with you. And thank you for everything that you do for our sector. Um, I think Vuba is absolutely awesome uh, service. I've used it myself, actually, to great effect. And my Vuba was absolutely lovely and really, really helped me out with a, a, a minor issue that I had with a property that was 200 miles away. So all the good guys are going to stick together um, and we are going to have a voice, hopefully, and let's hope that people listen because it's really, really important going forwards for the health of our sector that they do.